In this lesson, you'll learn how the API Demos app fits into the course and how you can use the API Demos code in your apps. This graphic shows the outline of the contents of the course, and the API Demos app fits into the App Components and APIs group. It's also a gateway to understanding all of the other groups we'll cover in future chapters. App Resources, Media and Camera, Web Apps, Remote Access, User Interface, Connectivity, Location and Sensors, Data Storage, and Animation and Graphics. And we'll be using the API demos coupled with other sample apps to cover these topics. This graphic shows how the API demos app groups intersect with our course groups. As you can see, in some cases, the API demos cover more than one course group, such as content covering app components, app resources, and data storage. And in some cases, a course group like user interface is covered by multiple API demo groups. For example, the user interface is covered by API demo accessibility, app, preference, text, and views. With this expanding list of possible coding options, how will you possibly be able to make choices about what code to use? To understand this, let's take a quick look at the development process. And most apps begin with some kind of conceptual design. This can be anything from a napkin sketch to an elaborate set of design documents. But there's usually something to start the development process off in a certain direction. And next, there's usually a design phase. The Android Developers website has a lot of good material for feeding the design phase. But this is a course on code development, so we won't be going over this material in any great detail. But it's good for you to be aware of what's there. There's material on creative vision, design principles, and UI. There's a style section dealing with the look and feel of app displays. There's a pattern section covering how the user can move around within an app and a building blocks section on the basic moving parts such as tabs and lists. And we'll refer back to some of these sections in later chapters dealing with specific capabilities. But overall, this material can be very helpful in pointing you in the right direction for finding and developing code. For example, in the page on buttons, there's a description of button options. If we go to our worksheet, go to data, filter, and we filter on button. We see a couple of entries that we could explore for button handling code using this Java source. As a general view of finding the right code design patterns, we've now looked at a number of sources for information. The developer's website, the API demos worksheet, sample projects, and web search, including the Stack Overflow website. With some system knowledge, the use of keywords, and research efforts, you should have some good success pinpointing the right design pattern for the task at hand. Now, once you find it, then what? To understand the answer to this, let's look at some code pattern elements. The full details of each code sample and pattern can be vastly different one from the other. However, there are common piece part types that can help you organize your approach to using the code. These include classes, methods, returns and parameters, variables, assemblies and calculations, resources, and code sequencing. It can be intimidating to confront a large code design pattern. They can be hard to understand at a glance. Breaking them down into pieces will help you digest the content and figure out how to apply the code to your own applications. Now, this is the kind of breakdown we did in the lessons on the four component types activities, services, content providers, and broadcast receivers. How you approach a code pattern can depend on its size, your knowledge of Java and Android, and the requirements for the application you're developing. In some cases, it might be best to start digesting classes you haven't used before. You might use the Android developer's website API guide and class reference sections. In other instances, for a large code pattern, you might start by digesting the sequencing of methods and statements. Going forward, we'll leave some of the sample app code analysis for you to perform. We won't have time to explain all Android capabilities to the same level of detail we did with the four component types. This kind of analysis is a skill you'll need in order to develop Android applications. Remember, you have lots of resources you can use to understand code patterns and their piece parts. 
You just have to take a deep breath and dive into the details.